SunMax has been designed to be the easiest, most cost-effective solar solution in the market. Everything has been designed to be an end-to-end, plug-and-play experience. What differentiates a SunMax system is our AC Solar module. It features a high-efficiency microinverter, integrated mounting frame, and plug-and-play cable. Another feature is our solar gateway, which provides a connection to the cloud for real-time monitoring and management. We also have tools like SunLink to help you design, plan, and price solar systems for your pre-sale efforts. After designing your array and locating the rafters on your roof, it's time to begin installation of your solar system. Because our solution was built from the ground up, we boast the fastest installation times on the market. Our roof mounts act as both a drill guide and structural element and work together with our proprietary flashing and assembly brackets to create a watertight support for your solar system. Once you've installed all the support structures, the next step is to install the trim skirt and solar panels. The skirts are installed by laying them into the grooves of the leveling assemblies. Once connected and secured, lay the solar panels into the assemblies and add another one to the top side of the panel then screw it into the roof mount. Complete the section by installing a connector and connecting the cabling between them. Once the rows finish, tighten the connector bolts on the lower side of the panels to secure them. This process is repeated row by row until the entire array is complete. When it comes time to provision your system, you'll find that getting your system online is incredibly easy. With your mobile device, simply scan the QR codes on each panel and add it to your system. Do the same for the gateway, and now your whole system is ready to be monitored and managed online. And there you have it. The easiest, most cost-effective solar solution on the market. Introducing Sunrax. array roof installation from start to finish. After measuring and marking rafters for install, compartmentalize tasks in a team as you drill, bolt, and fit the mounts and flashing to the rooftop. An additional flashing piece is used with tile rooftops. With the mount securely in place, insert the first row of mounting assemblies then tie a leveling string at both ends to adjust the height of the assemblies until they are the same across each row. Portrait and landscape trim covers run along the bottom row and are secured by a lock mechanism. Insert panel connectors with arrows lined to the marks on the back of the trim. Panel connectors join panels along each row. Proceed to hook and lower panels into the bottom row of mounting assemblies. After scanning the QR code into the customer site for the SunMax mobile app, insert mounting assemblies and panel connectors along the top side of the panel to stabilize and bond adjacent panels throughout the array. On rare occasions, connector mounts substitute panel connectors in the event that a mounting assembly coincides with the spot of a panel connector. Using portrait and landscape Y cables, continue connecting rows of adjacent modules.
using jumper cables connect different rows of modules. Cable clips hide and protect all trunk cabling throughout the array. A single end run kit transitions the trunk cabling to wire conductors for up to 16 modules, while a single gateway communicates with all of the microinverters in the array. The purpose of flashing is to ensure that roof penetrations are fully weatherproofed. Throughout this section, use caution when making penetrations to minimize risk to the rooftop. Roof shingles first need to be cut. Use a chalk stick to mark a 2 inch or 50 millimeter area around the roof mount. That will be used as a guide as you trim the second course of shingles. Once the shingles have been trimmed, position the roof mount over the center of the rafter. Then, carefully begin pre-drilling the two larger holes that will be used to secure the roof mount to the rafter. Use the shingle cutout and the two smaller holes on the roof mount as a guide for positioning. To avoid damaging the roof mount, do not drill the holes completely through with the roof mount in place. Remove the roof mount temporarily and finish pre-drilling two 3 16th inch or 4.8 millimeter holes approximately 2 inches or 50 millimeters deep. Make sure you cover both hole openings with roofing sealant. This will ensure a watertight insulation once the lag screws have secured the roof mount to the rafter. Position the roof mount back into place and secure it to the roof structure using the provided lag screws until it is fully seated. Slide a pry bar or shingle ripper under the roof shingles where the flashing is to be installed to break the bond between the roof courses. Also remove any nails from shingles that interfere with the flashing as they will degrade the weatherproof ability of the system. Apply roof sealant to the underside of the flashing, spreading it evenly across the bottom surface. Slip the flashing into place underneath the upper course of shingles, then lower the flashing into place over the roof mount. The flashing should be installed so that the Ubiquity logo faces toward the front. Replace the shingles to cover the roof flashing. The flashing should be positioned so that the lower edge does not extend beyond the edge of the first course of shingles, with the upper edge of the flashing being located underneath the third course of shingles. Apply a minimum of one quarter inch or six millimeters continuous roof caulking around the gap between the flashing and roof mount. Finally, install the rubber counter flashing over the neck of the roof mount until it is fully seated onto the flashing. To review, the purpose of flashing is to ensure that roof penetrations are fully weatherproofed. Roof shingles first need to be cut to allow proper installation of mounts and flashing materials. Use caution when penetrating the customer rooftop, applying roofing sealant to cover any gaps in the mount When installing and the composite system. roof mount and flashing, follow the instructions in the previous lessons, including the shingle rooftop flashing video, as you measure, mark, and remove tiles to install roof mounts and the flashing material. It is highly suggested that you apply a layer of roofing sealant and reinforcing material around this standard flashing material to prevent any leaks. After the roof flashing is ready, proceed to insert tiles one by one as you measure, mark, and then remove them to cut a conservatively sized space through which the roof mounts will penetrate the tile. To cut the tile material, you can use an angle grinder paired with a masonry blade or a two inch masonry hole saw. Once cut, place the tile back into position. The final step is to shape the tile flashing to fit the contours of the tile material. Once shaped, slide the tile flashing underneath the tile, then securely install the extension post before applying roofing sealant and seating the rubber cap. To review, after the roof mount and flashing are installed, proceed to measure and cut an area in the tile roof through which the roof mount will protrude. Once cut, place the tile back into position, then shape and fit the tile flashing to fit the contours of the tile material before installing the posts with roof sealant and the seated rubber cap. With the flashing installed, begin to insert and install the first row of mounts. At each end of the first row, measure and adjust the mounting assemblies to the same height. The mounting assembly swivel to increase or decrease the height. 
Then tie a string at both ends to bring the mounting assemblies to the same height across the entire row. Note that the mounting assemblies for subsequent rows should also be at the same height as you insert them into the frames of modules you are installing. Hook the trim covers onto the mounting assemblies. Then insert panel connectors at trim cover gaps as well as alignment marks on multi-panel trim covers. Finally, secure the trim kit by fastening the trim lock to the mounting assembly. To review, install mount assemblies at equal height across the bottom row, then add trim kits and panel connectors to begin Before installing Before you can monitor panels. a customer's site, you'll need to complete your first installation using the SunMax mobile apps for Android or iOS. Customer sites are listed and can be sorted by column. Click on a customer site to see information as it relates to the power and energy produced by the SunMax system. To review, the ability to monitor the system allows you and your customers to track the performance of the SunMax system, allowing you to more effectively market to prospective customers. Together with the monitoring software, you can upsell operations and maintenance support to the customer for increased monthly profits over the lifetime of the system. Via the Solar Gateway, the SunMax monitoring software shows both real-time and historical data regarding the power and energy production of the solar energy system. In general, the monitoring software relates the performance and status of the microinverters. Production varies normally over the course of a 24-hour period based on irradiance and temperature measurements. Microinverters may appear offline for a number of different reasons. For example, Whenever there is insufficient power on either the DC or AC side of the microinverter, it will shut down operation. This is normal and expected, like during nighttime hours or when grid service goes offline. Inspect the AC module if the microinverter goes offline during normal hours. Inspect the gateway and end run if the entire array or select module branches go offline during normal hours. With the trim covers installed properly, you're now ready to place and install the first row of AC modules, which will structurally fasten to neighboring modules in the same row. Jumper and Y cables are also connected in this video tutorial. Use the same techniques described here to install modules at any row in the array. Begin by hooking the AC module onto the top lip of the mounting assemblies at a 45 degree angle, then Lower the module while pulling its top edge toward you to keep it securely in place at the mount. As mentioned in the previous video, the remaining roof mount locations should not have mounting assemblies installed yet. Holding the AC module in position, insert the mounting assembly hardware into the top edge of the panel with the arrows facing forward and line it up over the roof mounts in the next row. If the AC module is supported by more than one mounting assembly or connector mount, ensure that each component is inserted into the top edge of the AC module before securing it to the roof mounts. While lowering the AC module into place, continue to pull its top edge slightly toward you to ensure that it remains hooked onto the swivel mounts in the previous row. Secure the AC module to the roof mounts using the mounting hardware. If the AC module is not seated properly or sitting evenly with the mounting hardware in row 1, then make the necessary adjustments. If adjustments need to be made to one or both of the mounting assemblies, turn the mounting assembly base in either direction to adjust its height. Once the mounting assemblies are all at the same height, secure the AC module to the roof mounts. Subsequent AC modules can be installed in a similar manner as the first module. However, be sure to connect AC trunk cables between neighboring modules before completely lowering and securing each module to the roof mounts. Adjacent AC modules whose corners sit at a common mount point are structurally supported and electrically bonded by the mounting assembly. If the corner edges of the AC modules do not rest at a common mount point, use a panel connector to join the AC modules together. Panel connectors hold the AC modules together structurally along the frame edges and corners while also bonding them together electrically. The final layout of the array may prevent you from easily accessing the modules later in the install, 
so after cables and modules are connected, be sure to properly fasten and securely clip cables to the lips on the underside of AC modules. This will suspend the cables above the rooftop and keep them from being exposed to the sun and other harsh weather elements. Continue installing AC modules, working from side to side until the layout of your solar array is complete. In a multi-row system, jumper cables are required to connect sequential rows of AC modules as described in detail in Appendix B of the SunMax User Guide. Use clips to fasten these jumper cables to the underside of the modules as well. Once the last AC module in your array has been installed, locate the open Y cable in your string of AC modules and attach it to the end run assembly. Repeat this step for each string of up to 16 AC modules. To review, AC modules hook onto the top lip of the mounting assembly. Connect trunk cables, then carefully lower the modules into place and secure the mount assemblies at the same height across each row. Securing trunk cables to the underside of the modules as you continue to install modules across the array.